Warren Officer DeShiel Fairborn, codename Flint, was born in Wichita, Kansas. His action force counterpart is named David Fairborn. Let's talk about him. Before we begin, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics. Whether you're coming back or it's your first time here, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. We upload videos just like this one every week. So, all right, let's jump into our foray into Flint. As a young boy, DeShiel did not have the homiest of homes. His mother was an alcoholic and his father left when he was just 13 years old. It's why he put all his effort and time into academics and life outside the home. He was top honors, he was prom king, he got his license at 16 and desperately wanted to help his mom with her issues, but at 17, she died. DeShiel moved in with his grandparents two hours away in Topeka, Kansas. He ended up taking advanced courses at Washburn University and met a girl in a Russian lit class named Claire Austin. Flint at this time was 18 and she was 21. But she dropped out of Washburn, moved to New Jersey. Flint actually followed her where he enrolled in Rutgers University, but they soon broke up and we'll come back to that in a moment. Flint graduating as a Rhodes Scholar with a degree in English Lit. If you're not familiar with a Rhodes Scholar, it's basically someone who has received a scholarship or a post-grad program at England's University of Oxford. It's a very prestigious thing to have. It's said that he was bored of academic life and inspired by his experience in the big world. And so he enlisted in the United States Army and graduated with top honors from Ranger School, Spec Ops School, Airborne School, where he got his first beret, and finally Warrant Officer's School. Action Force says that this was the British Army with a similar academia and military path, but includes SAS training at Hereford and Sandhurst Officers Training College. He is infantry through and through, but he's also qualified helicopter slash rotary wing pilot which I suppose includes things like the V-22. His real name actually comes from DeShiel Hammett, who wrote the Maltese Falcon and a fighting knife inventor named William Fairbairn. Flint's last name was originally supposed to be Fairbairn, which was confirmed by Mark Palomo, who wrote the ultimate guide to G.I. Joe and Larry Hama. His nickname came from a guy named Flint Dill, who's a story editor and writer at Sumbo for a few episodes of the cartoon, along with writing for Transformers and Humanoids, Garbage Pail Kids, and tons of video games. So with either the U.S. Army or the British Army, Flint became a high highly regarded field officer. He led his troops in country on several top secret missions. His boots were not only on the ground with, sometimes before his own troops. And during this time, Flint actually met a guy named Sergeant Conrad Hauser, who would later go on to recruit him for the G.I. Joe team. Flint's first action figure was released with Series 4 in 1985. He came with uh, sleeves rolled up, a 12-gauge boomstick, and suspenders made of shotgun shells. Well, they weren't really suspenders, per se. Let's make that sound a bit cooler. His suspenders are Alice Molly tactical load-bearing system configured with a shotgun shell holster. That sounds a little cool that way. Interestingly enough, his first figure lists him as an E6, but this was corrected later to be a more appropriate W3 grade. The same year his toy debuted, 1985, also happens to be the same year that the Sunbow cartoon debuted on small cathode ray televisions across America. He filled in for Duke in the first season, and by season two, Flint became third after Hawk and Duke. July of 1985 also happens to be Flint's first appearance in issue 37 of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, where the Joes were at a country fair. There's this large roller coaster that Flint winds up battling with the twins on, Zayma and Tomax. And for fans of the show, Flint became a fan favorite really quickly. However, for readers of the comic books, it created points of confusion because Flint was doing what Duke was doing in the comic. This subsided as fans quickly <laughs> realized how cool he was. Lady J and Flint teamed up with Destro to attack Silent Castle, which was once owned by Destro himself, but now was occupied by Major Blood. They wanted to recover the blueprints and, and plans for pterodromes. Up till this point, the team had a little difficulty warming up to Flint. He was seen as this tough guy with a harsh exterior, hard to get to know. But a squad of eels attacked and Flint was able to hold them off, which allowed Lady J to escape and go for help because the pit was being assaulted. Lady J warmed up to him quickly after this and the two developed a relationship. Although in issue 67, she actually smacked him in the face. Well, he did hold off those eels, though he almost died in the process. And while recovering, he told her some of his fears and doubts, and she finally saw beneath that hard front he was putting up, and that opening up really led Lady J to fall in love with him. But wait, let's go back to that face slap. Scarlet and Snake Eyes had actually faked their deaths to go on an unsanctioned rescue mission to Europe. And when they got back, Flint was pissed that they hadn't told him about the mission. That's when Lady J smacked him and said that he did it to protect them and because they care. It was a nice moment. And then in issue 101, through 106, Flint and his team were paired up for a joint mission with the October Guard. Their orders were to advise a group of rebels in Sierra Gordo to take back their country from Destro and his cronies. By issue 123, he's teamed up with Clean Sweep and Ozone as the new Eco Warriors, which had an interesting, really bright action figure to go along with it, and they take on Cesspool and his weaponized toxic waste sludge. Flint remained with the team until their decommissioning in issue 155, and he wouldn't be seen again for Hama's writing until issue 170, where he's on the USS Flag with Roadblock 
interlocking Lady J, and they go feet dry in a tomahawk, which is this dual rotor bird inspired by a CH 46C knight, although Navy and Marines have retired that in favor of the Osprey, which actually gives them a couple hundred more miles of range and force projection capabilities for any uh, carrier battle group using them. Anyway, they capture Darklon and Wild Bill and set the bird down on a hot LZ for Xfil, and Lady J and Darklon are actually hit by small arms fire on the way up, and once they're Oscar Mike, there's the catch. Flint only has enough plasma and coagulant to save one of them. Did he save his love, or did he save the mission? What would you do? Flint shows LJ, and Roadblock had to use sandwich bags to keep Darklon alive long enough to hit medical on the USS flag, but on the way in, hydraulic pressure plummeted, and it was all Wild Bill could do to keep this helo aloft. The flight deck was full of trauma teams and crash crews that were ready for this hard landing. The helo was leaking not only blood, but GP4 jet fuel, and then slam, they hit the deck hard, but everybody made it. <laughs> we don't see him again until issue 192, where he deploys in a C-130 to Sierra Gorda with Alpha Team. In issue 195, Flint and his team find this old pterodrome where some hostages are being held, and they become hostages themselves, and they're taken to a mineshaft. Roadblocks hit, but they all managed to escape. And then we saw him at the memorial service at the death of the first snake guys. This really great memorial service that they had outside of the pit. And then he was also seen as late as issue 241 when sneak peek succumbed to a gunshot wound. And this veterinarian who was not trained as a trauma surgeon was not able to save him. And that's pretty much the last time we've seen him. He was in Darklonia. However, he is kind of off the board right now. Understandable because his last few appearances have in fact included deaths of some major characters and people who are close to him. 1994 to 2010 is predominantly comic book non-canon of course but in Devil's Due the team's reinstated and Flint becomes the Joe's XO. Flint's writing a book about his time with the team of the Baroness and he were captured and held in the Czech Republic but they both escaped. Also during this time Lady J died at the hands of the Red Shadows and Flint kind of leaned into his gruffness and his hardness and he became reckless and nearly suicidal on the missions he went out but when Hama returned for the IDW title he wrote Lady J is alive and back with Flint so that was all uh, non-canon like I said. Let's talk about Marissa. For the longest time, fans suggested this character named Marissa Fairmourn to be Flynn's daughter. Marissa's actually from another timeline. She's part of the Earth Defense Command in the G1 Transformers cartoon. And it was always implied or insinuated, assumed, however, never officially confirmed that they were related. An editor on the Transformers book named Flint Dill, who I mentioned before, confirmed on the DVD that Lady J was Marissa's mom. And supporting this further is that Bill Ratner, who voiced Flint on the TV series and the movie, and also voiced Marissa's unnamed father on Transformers during this episode called The Killing Jar. But then IDW says that Flint is in fact her dad, except so remember when Flint was 18 and he was enrolled at Washburn University in advanced class and he met this girl named Claire Austin? Well, that is Marissa's mother. This is confirmed also with issue 2 of the Hasbro Heroes source book, as well as issue 6 of 2013's The Cobra Files by John Barber, who's a senior editor at IDW Publishing, where we got some of that original really early story on Flint from. For Sunbow, there's actually three Three separate PSA announcements that he's in. I think that was the, one of the most for any of the characters. In G.I. Joe Renegade, Flint is an 05. In the live action G.I. Joe Retaliation, Flint is played by DJ Katrona and is an E4 Corporal. So there's a bit of variation there depending on what you go with. Flint's first figure was actually one of the new swivel neck designs. It obviously allowed for greater articulation than ever before, which was pretty cool. Hasbro created a subset of the Joe's designated Tiger Force with these really badass black and yellow tiger stripe designs, like on the Tiger Rat, which is a platform used for CAS and ground troop support inspired by the A-10 Warthog Thunderbolt. It came with a suite of wing-mounted SAM and surface-to-air missiles and a laser cannon in place of the forward-mounted 30 Mike Mike Gow 8 Gatling Auto Cannon. It's really cool. But I'm getting really off track. That's it for this one, my friends. This is the origin and the history of G.I. Joe's Flint. As always, I welcome your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and share this with your friends. And that's it. I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.